Welcome to Glory Release Church. Our speaker for today is Pastor Jim Chamberlain. Today I'm talking about the armour bearer. And uh, <laughs> as you can see, there was a demonstration of just an armour bearer right there. Sometimes it's just laughter and joy just being released. And uh, some people really just don't even understand that, actually, uh, because the Spirit does it His way. And laughter and joy just crack, can just crack things in the spiritual realm. Um, and uh, often we don't understand it because we're thinking out of our mind and we're thinking in human ways, but actually God's ways and not our ways. And, uh, you know, first of all, we've got to remember uh, Jesus is our armour bearer. And, uh, you know, uh, David was just talking about it before, about being connected to the vine. And, um, you know, he loved us even in our worst state. And he says he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Whoa, that was quick. I've just finished the sermon. <laughs> so, don't know whether we take that as a word from the Lord, but anyway. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a bearer. It was a, it, it was a person that used to carry the king's weapons into battle, you know, and... Uh, and um, <clears throat> generally, generally he'd be a strong person, courageous. Um, and if the king was under pressure, uh, uh, the, the armour bearer would actually know the king's strategies, know the plans and purposes. And, uh, you know, as uh, kingdom armour bearers ourselves, uh, we've got to know the king's strategies, know the king's plans, just Jesus' plans and strategies. You know, it's assessing the atmosphere. Um, you know, uh, uh, as Sylvia's leading today and Sarah's leading, they're assessing the atmosphere. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's that's part of, you know, being the armour bearer, really. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm assessing it too, <laughs> even though I'm sitting down sometimes. That's just what back's a bit sore at the moment. But that doesn't mean to say I'm doing nothing. Just letting you all know. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, we should always we should all be somebody's armour bearer. And uh, you know, the modern day probably term is uh, uh, probably a bodyguard. Really, um, you know, uh, a bodyguard will will take the hit or take the bullet for uh, what's coming. Uh, you know, like if it's a president and you're protecting the president, you know, you'll take the hit or you'll see things coming ahead of time. And uh, <clears throat> and um, you'll prepare for it and that sort of thing. Um, you see, our weapons are not of this world, but whatever we lack, it says we only need to ask for. You see, we an armour bearer pr prays, walks in faith, and has hope, and we need joy, already demonstrated, and the peace and the Holy Spirit's fire, already demonstrated today, must have known it was coming. <clears throat> you see, these things um, uh, prepare a preparation for um, uh, the battle ahead, you know, and God will always take you through something in order to uh, prepare you for the next step. See, it doesn't matter whether you're the clean-up crew, uh, the meet-and-greet crew, the pastor, an international speaker, or whether you're pioneering a new ministry. You know, there's reasons why Jesus sent his disciples out in groups of two or more. And it says in Luke 9.1, he gave them all authority to heal the sick 
and deliver people. You see, he sent them out to heal the sick and deliver people so that the oppressed would be set free. You see, the spirit of an armor bearer must always be in relationship with God, and that's praying, reading the word. It's more than just showing up on the spot. It entails being present spiritually, mentally, emotionally, being alert and in tune, hearing what Jesus is saying, because otherwise you will always enter in by the flesh and what you see. And that generally comes by actually judging the situation. If you don't know what's happening in the atmosphere, if you don't know what's happening in the spiritual realm, you will end up judging it. And when you judge it, then you come in by the flesh and enter into the flesh. <clears throat> you see, I know we're born again, but it can be amazing those who just want to fight the devil or not do anything at all. You see, we're called to be alert to the enemy's schemes, not fight every battle, and it says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You know, I'm going to talk a little bit about a, a, a King Saul who uh, was a king for the Israelites, but he had an armor bearer, and, uh, and that armor bearer was David. And it said in 1 Samuel 16, 21, Saul liked him very much, and David became one of his armor bearers. When Saul sent word to Jesse, which is David's father, <coughs> saying, allow David to remain in my service, for I am pleased with him. Then it says, whenever the Spirit came on God, uh, sorry, whenever the Spirit from God came on Saul, um, realize that uh, at this stage of the game, Saul was disobedient and was doing things his own way. And uh, so there was a, a bad spirit that came on him. David would take his lyre and play. Then the relief would come. You see, these were the days of small beginnings when David came away from shepherding to being an armor bearer. For Saul, <clears throat> shepherding was a place God developed the relationship with David. When he was called into service, the favor of God was on him and he grew in favor with God and man because Saul called him into service. So he grew in favor with Saul. And, uh, you know, uh, Saul actually loved him like a son for a start. <clears throat> you see, although David had the kingship anointing and sat at the table with the king he was serving, you see, Proverbs twenty two twenty nine. it says, Do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. David enjoyed serving for Saul and excelled at whatever he did. And of course, when Saul saw the hand of God on his life, he got jealous. <clears throat> you see, and that's when the division came. Um, and Saul actually threw the spear. And you think, well, that was pretty bad news. But you see, that division came so that uh, one would grow one way and one would grow the other. You see, David grew in righteousness, but Saul carried on growing in disobedience because he followed down the path of disobedience. At that point at time, he could have actually repented and gone a different way and helped David and mentored David. <clears throat> but because of the jealousy had taken over and he could see his kingdom was being pulled from him, <clears throat> he actually carried on the line of disobedience. And David then, uh, he actually carried on in a place of righteousness. <clears throat> You see, David was chased by Saul, 15 years apparently. And he had the opportunity to kill him 
several times. But he refused, saying, who can touch the Lord's anointed? You see, when you've grown up in a place of uh, being an armour bearer, uh, you know uh, the place. David knew the place. And he knew that the king was anointed for a purpose. And it didn't matter whether the king had gone bad, you know, he was still an anointed king. And often we can be quick to bring somebody down because actually they've gone bad, but actually they're still in that place of anointing. <clears throat> you know, Psalm 75, 6, 7, it says, No one from the east or the west uh, or from the desert can exalt themselves. It is God who judges. He brings one down and he exalts another up. You see, it's God who lifts people up or he will... Uh, put them down. <clears throat> you see, during this time, God was teaching David not to grasp at the crown. Although he had the promise of being a king, it had to come in God's time. You see, it talks in Philippians 2, it says, uh, although Jesus was... Uh, equal with God, uh, he did not, um, what was it? He did not consider himself equal, but he became a servant. You see? And of course, that's uh, uh, the armor bearer. The armor bearer is undergirding, praying, releasing, knowing what needs to be released in the atmosphere. Releasing those things, releasing joy. You know, uh, David had to stand up in front of his men and say, no, do not touch the anointed. And you see, it was those things that he actually stood up for which actually helped him to stand in righteousness and he became stronger in, in standing for righteousness. You see, Luke 16.10 You know, it's about a, a shrewd manager. And um, he was actually found to be uh, dishonest, this guy. But <laughs> in the end, he gave away, his, he sold his money and he gave it away. But in that, it says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches? See, later we read about Saul and we, we know what happens. And, and towards the end of, the, uh, of his time, he, uh, he goes into the battle, into the battlefield. And, and, of course, he dies in his last battle. And on his, near, on his deathbed, uh, he asks the armor bearer, to run his sword through him. You see, but the armor bearer would not. Because the one thing you're taught is you're to protect the king at all costs. You see, so the armor bearer would no way run his sword through. So then Saul, seeing this, falls upon his spear. So then, seeing the king do that, the armor bearer falls upon his sword, <laughs> pierces the sword. You see, he was not going to go home and face everybody at home without the king because he was there to protect the king. And so... At all costs, he was to protect the king. You see, and then if we go along, uh, an Amalekite uh, foreigner, he's a, a scavenging, and uh, and he comes and he picks up Saul's crown, and he takes it to David, and he gives a report of the circumstances except he changed the details a little. And he said, 
When Saul had fallen and could not survive, he killed Saul. You see, he said when he came, he could see that Saul was not going to survive. So he did him a favour and killed him. David then said to him, Why were you not afraid to lift your hand against the Lord's anointed? You see, one thing David had learnt along the way is that when he had the opportunity to kill Saul, the fear of the Lord came in and he could not do it. You see, because everything inside him was to protect the Lord's anointing. And so David ended up having the Amalekite killed because he was actually looking for a place of position. And he thought he was doing David a favour. You know, this man had been hunting him down for 15 years. So, hey, you probably would have thought he got it and well, I guess in the worldly standard, he probably would have got a promotion almost because <laughs> he could have done them a favor. But you see, David knew better, and he knew that actually, in the spirit, you could not do that. You know, Ephesians 6 6, it says, Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you are serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one of you for whatever good they do. You see, You know, the, the Lord's eye is on us, and it doesn't matter whether it's serving a king or whether it's, uh, you know, as I said before, whether it's a, a, a meeting and greeting or, you know, um, uh, praying for friends or, um, you know, uh, we're an armor bearer or we're all armor bearers uh, for each other. You know, in Galatians it says, um, uh, carry one another's burdens. And, um, you know, sometimes being an armor bearer is not the easiest task. Because actually, uh, there's uh, uh, difficult things you do have to face. You know, and I, I remember reading a story, and it was about Noah. And, you know, he'd come through the flood and he'd planted the vineyard, and, you know, about, we're talking about the grapes again, David. And, uh, and then he got the, the, the grapes and, and then he got drunk. And first of all, the young son comes in and he's laughing, but the elder two covered him over, not looking at him, backing up, you know, and they covered him. And it, you know, it says love covers a multitude of sins. You know, but if this happened night after night after night after night, then you'd have to tell Noah he has a drinking problem. Wouldn't you? And how well would that go? You see, an armor bearer. You see, sometimes you've got to face some real hard things and 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 make some truths and you know and sometimes you know when you're in and and being an armor bearer it's not the easiest because the people you're dealing with uh in such a battle they go round and round in circles of all their circumstance that they're actually and you've actually got to point them to christ You see, we 
when God came to Adam and Eve, uh, yeah, you know, he knew what, or everything that had happened. But he still asked the question. And he says, why are you hiding? You know, and often people, uh, when things are going wrong, they're hiding. Because there's this, this happening, there's that happening. But actually... <clears throat> you've got to point them to the real truth. And sometimes that real truth is, actually, where are you with God? You see, the armor bearer will come out and actually bring them into the, because it says, you know, we're to walk in the light and have fellowship with one another. You know, when we're not having fellowship, it's like, Little blinkers going off for me. And when people are not walking in a light, that's another little blinker. Bing, 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 bing. You know, it says walk in the light, have fellowship with one another. And that's what an armor bearer does. It's continually pointing people. And the light is Christ. And you've got to point them back to you, the relationship with Christ. Because actually everything becomes prolifial. When actually, when, when they connect back in with Christ, or you connect them back in with Christ, actually half the stuff that they're battling, or just about nearly all of it, will just fall off. Because uh, the the they're connected back into the vine. And then actually, once that happens, uh, you'll end up, who knows? Depends what God does. Basically, God will do what he, God will do what he wants to do in that place. So, we'll, uh, we'll just pray. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah, Father, we just ask that... Um, yeah, Lord, as, as uh, one another's armor bearers, Father, Lord, that uh, you help us to, uh, yeah, pray for one another and lift one another up, encourage one another, Lord Jesus. And, uh, Lord, uh, yeah, I guess, in a sense, to be our brother's keepers, Father God, and to continue to point them to you, Lord, because you're the one. Uh, and Father, just a, a few words, a few words from you uh, just changes everything. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for listening to this message. If you wish to know more about Glory Release Ministries, visit our website at gloryreleaseministries.org.